Noble Jolly said, if you want to change the people, change their literature. When people start to think for themselves, matter of fact, I won't talk about people, I'll talk about me. When, uh, as I've read different books, <clears throat> um, sometimes there's portions of the book, well, a lot of the times there's portions of books that are just boring and, like, not important, but there are also, at times, certain things written in books that corroborate other things written in other books. <clears throat> or that, like, you can begin to make connections on if you've read other books. <clears throat> and that, in turn, makes you want to read or look up more about a specific subject. And you have to have a desire to understand or seek the truth or find information. Uh, if you don't, there's a high poss possibility that it's not going to come your way. And it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. But I think it's worth it. Because you gain perspectives that you wouldn't get from just listening to people. You know, and that reaffirms for me the man knows not by being told. Because I can tell you, you know, um, I don't know. I can tell you anything. <laughs> and... Just reading concrete things in the mind that just listening doesn't really. And this is the important uh, this is the important role of scholars is to provide a certain perspective for people <clears throat> so that way when they do read something, they have that general perspective or general uh, way of thinking so that way they can properly receive what they're reading. And this is why, as an example, there's a saying that uh, that scholars are inheritors of the prophets, right? Because the prophets have been given uh, divine inspiration for, or for something that they just naturally have or that they're just naturally receiving from from uh, the creator of all things. And we're supposed to dissect that information and do our best to understand it because that's what it was sent for, it was sent for us. But when we don't put in the effort to understand things, then we just end up parroting information. And then we don't end up applying <clears throat> the information into our lives, which, you know, this is where the parable comes from. Uh, I believe it's in the Quran where, you know, it basically says, what's the point of giving you books if you're not going implement, to implement them? You're like a, you're essentially like a pack mule where, you know, back in the day they would um, breed horses and donkeys for, to create a mule who was a strong, strong animal able to carry a bunch of things. And a lot of times they would load those mules up with just books and books and books and books and a bunch of knowledge. You know, so it's like, you're like the donkey. You have all this information, but you don't live it. You don't even teach it. You just have it. What's the point of just having it? Or what's the point of having information without actually understanding it? <clears throat> so my goal has always been to write books or to write anything, little booklets, leaflets, whatever, passages, whatever, to write things that are, that are easy to comprehend and that gets straight to the point. There's no mysticism in what I write. There is no, you have to be studying a certain subject for X amount of years before you can actually understand what I'm what I'm writing and what I'm saying. I try to write things in a simplistic point of view. Uh, <clears throat> when I was stationed in Camp Pendleton, 2013, we had a, a first sergeant. I'm pretty sure he's a first sergeant. First Sergeant Blue is his name. I was a corporal at the time, and uh, when you get sent to a new duty station, you have to check in. And one of the people you have to check in with is the company first sergeant. So I went to check in with him. He was an Asiatic man, first sergeant blue. You can look him up. He's probably still in the Marines. He's probably higher than a first sergeant now. Uh, but anyway, 
He told me something that at the time I didn't get. But as I came into more science, 2016, so about three years later, I got it. And he basically said, if you teach your junior Marines uh, t uh, intangible lessons, oh, I forgot exactly what he said, but he said something about being able to make intangible lessons valuable to your junior Marines. So that way they can make them tangible. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but I remember it. And, uh, you know, this is when you're in the military, there's a certain protocol you're supposed to do. So, you know, you go up to the first sergeant's door, you knock on it and, you know, you announce yourself, corporal so-and-so checking in, blah, 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 blah. He says, come in. You walk into the room, you're center to his desk. I forgot how many paces away, three, six paces away. Stand at attention. Good morning, first sergeant. Corporal so and so here checking in. Blah 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 blah. I say whatever you say. He'll say at ease, probably rest, whatever he says, and then he stops. And that's what he said to me. To teach your junior Marines the intangible lessons so that way they can make them tangible. And I had no idea what that meant. But it's it's teaching them the concepts of things. So that way they can better understand how and why they're doing what they're doing. And I appreciate First Sergeant Blue for that. Like I said, you can look him up. First Sergeant Blue, 2013, Camp Pendleton, the 22 area. I forgot the company I was part of. Anyway. <clears throat> so, I've, I mean, I've taken a lot of lessons from the military and incorporated it into my teaching style, into more science. Uh, you know, I attended corporal cor Corporal's course, Okinawa, Japan, Camp Hansen. And, uh, you know, we had to give things called hip pocket classes. Hip pocket classes. Which just means you pull out anything. <laughs> you pull out information and you teach. Uh, that was part of Corporal's course. Uh, then we also had to prepare actual uh, lectures or lessons on things. All of it was predominantly Marine Corps based, except for the hip pocket class. They gave us the leave to teach whatever we wanted to teach for five minutes. But that's also related to my public speaking class that I took in high school. But anyway, uh, one of the things that they taught us in the Marines was to break things down Barney style. And, you know, I remember being a kid, I used to love watching Barney, but it has nothing to do with Barney. <laughs> it's to break things down so simply that a child who watches Barney could understand it. Because uh, we're dealing with people in the Marines who may not necessarily have the highest ASVAB score. Uh, so they may not be the most intelligent people. And that's fine. Because uh, I'm not the most most intelligent person either. So I fit right in <laughs> with the dummies. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this style of teaching. Uh, of, you know, having junior Marines under my charge and. Uh, knowing that I'm responsible for them and my job is to inspire them and to influence the older Marines. Um, I take that into more science. So when I teach, my goal is to actually teach you something. So that way you don't have to rely on me for anything. Um, because that's the only way that we can actually thrive as a society. We can't make each other dependent on each other. You know, I can't be your only source of information. You have to seek it for yourself. I can introduce you to certain things that you may not have known of. I can explain things maybe in a different perspective that you may not heard before. So that way you can begin to grind your gears and your mind yourself. So you can say, hmm, I never thought of this that way. And with this new perspective, I can understand that, that, and that. That's the point. When you go to college... That's exactly what they do. I had a, a 12th grade English teacher who taught, who was a professor at a college. And he told us that he's going to teach us the same way he teaches college. His job is to introduce this information to us. And then our job is to study the book with the perspective that he's given us. And I took that and adopted it to my teaching style with more science because it just makes sense. When you go to college, you have to buy the books. Your teacher is someone who knows the books already who has the concepts of the books already, has the philosophy of the books already, has the perspective of the books already, and they're introducing these new topics to you 
So that way, when you read the book for yourself, you have a better understanding of what you're reading and its practical application. That's the point of books. You cannot get that through music. You cannot get that full perspective through just lectures either. This is why Noble Jarley Noble Jarley said in order to change a people you have to change their literature. You don't change their music and you don't change what they listen to. You change what they're reading because when you read a word or when you read a book somehow the written word has an impact on your mind. And that's just what it is. Wa alaykum assalam aki that's, that's just what it is. So that's the that's the purpose of the book. So we can say as an example, um, I can tell you a mortgage is promissory fraud. I can tell you that. But until you read an actual case, right? And I'm not going to have the, the books here. But if you read it, once you read an actual case where a judge, a judge is explaining what promissory fraud is, how there's deceit involved, how there's a promise that's made. And then that promise is not delivered upon. And then there's an individual that relied on that pro- on that promise for something. But then since that promise was never give- given to them, as a result, uh, they ended up losing something. Uh, once you read it for yourself, it's like, oh, I get it. <laughs> it clicks. You know, and many more have, have uh, said that the way that I write just makes them get it more. Because I'm not putting in filler information to make myself seem more intelligent than I actually am. I'm telling you, this is what it is. This is how you get from A to B so that way you can get to C. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm not talking about, well, C, brothers and sisters, peace, family, Islam, ism, five on the left, two on the right. When you philosophically think about A squared, isolated from B squared, plus the tangent of the cosine minus the tangent of the cosine. You have A squared itself. Why? 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 For what? What? <laughs> we don't get anything out of that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A times A plus B times A, excuse me, plus B times B equals C times C. There it is. That's, that is the equation. The problem is people are getting the equation and then not getting the philosophy behind why the equation exists. All right, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared is an algebraic expression of a relationship between a number and another number, which will equal a third number. It's just a relationship of something. So that way when you, you can apply it to things, not just a, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then now you're just stuck with this equation that you have no idea how to even use it. And that's how people are given more science. They're not giving the philosophy behind the information that they're presenting. And then if they do, they're just giving the philosophy behind the idea that they're presenting and not the practical application. Like the brother said, it's it's just pure delusion. So you have... You have applied mathematics and then you have number theory, the theory of numbers in general, right? So you can't quantify numbers because it's infinite. So to just discuss the inf- <laughs> the fact that numbers are infinite doesn't necessarily help you at all. It's just, oh, that's a cool way to think. That sounds cool that numbers are infinite and then there's rational numbers and irrational numbers. Oh, that sounds cool. But then when it comes to doing your taxes, when it comes to counting your money, when it comes to uh, regular basic applied math, then, then it's just, well, all I have is a number theory. I don't know how to use it and I don't know how it applies to me. Well, then what's the point of, ha- of having the information? And this is why, as an example, in a Circle 7 Quran, it says that a mastermind shows you his footprints as proof that he's been that way. So he's not just, he or she's not just saying do X, Y, and Z. They're saying, look, I do X, Y, and Z, and here's the result. And that's a perfect segue into this. You know, I've had this book on my website for years. I've had this book on my website for years. Uh, This is a new book. Um, And some, as far as like the debt validation letter, that's also in this book. Uh, But this is specifically for uh, this subject. But 
you know, uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about this, talk about trust law, talk about UCCs and secure a party creditor and authenticate birth certificate and uh, UCC one financial statements. And they'll say, oh, uh, irrevocable trust, pure estate, irrevocable, allodial trust. They add all these adjectives as if, you know, to mystify things. Those are all adjectives, pure, clear, allodial estate trust. Those are, listen. A trust is just an agreement. What makes a trust irrevocable is the moment you die, you cannot alter it. Therefore, it's you cannot take it back. You cannot revoke it. Therefore, it becomes irrevocable. That's it. A clear trust just means you clearly articulate how you want this thing to be administered. A loyal just means no one has control over it. So don't be mystified by all these words. Anyway, my point is, you know, they'll have... They'll have, you know, they go through their papers of, oh, look, I have this stamped by the Secretary of State and my birth certificate is authenticated and here's my UCC1 statement and here's... But they won't show you their trust in application as far as tangible results. So they talk about the philosophy of it. But then they don't correspond it with tangible results, which is also known as proof of claim. So they claim that this process does something for them. But there's no proof that it does. Here's an example of proof that this information has worked for me and my family or my family and I. Here's an actual case number. Here's where the actual constable served these papers. And when you go to my, and I'll just show, I mean, I've showed this before, but you see where they return the property, declare my father and my mother as owners of the property, and to uh, declare that the foreclosure is null and void and of no legal effect. And I've done, <clears throat> I've done videos on every single thing I did throughout this process, uh, from filing claims in federal court, to my initial response to the uh, to the bank when they were threatening foreclosure, to my uh, to my attempt to um, uh, go through arbitration according to Rhode Island general laws, uh, to me you know having plenty you know multiple conversations with my mother, to me going to city hall to file the trust that we made together, which was a revocable trust, um, strictly for this purpose of defending the estate because I have two sisters, so they also have a right of claim so I couldn't just claim the estate for myself because that's not fair to my sisters. So it was a revocable trust for this specific purpose where I was designated trustee for this specific thing because the bank was claiming that I had no right to uh, say anything in regards to this mortgage because I didn't sign it. At the time, I was a minor, so I couldn't have signed it. But anyway, those are the results years later. Started in 2019. They threatened to foreclose right before Christmas 2019 or 2018. And every step of the way, I documented every single thing that I've said. And every single thing that I've said um, are in these books, which is why I wrote the book. In these books. In them. So that way, you know, because when I when I first started learning from Taj Street Bay, you know, he would talk about mortgage fraud and foreclosures and how they're screwing people over and i said well my parents have a mortgage and if he what he's saying is true there's probably a probability that this is going to happen to them and an attorney is probably not going to help us to the extent that this man is talking about so before my parents even were facing foreclosure i was studying law so that way in the event that it happens even, and if it doesn't, wonderful. But if it does, then I feel like I have the ability to, if they get an attorney, have a competent conversation with this person, competent conversation with this person to ensure that they're doing uh, their job to the best of their, not even to the best of their ability, but according to what I know about the law. And if they're saying anything to dupe my parents out of anything, then I would be able to say, uh, that person's lying to you. Here's the case law. And then we can respond uh, you know, on paper to that attorney's office, notify the court, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So even if, you know, we lost, we can 
started over again by saying ineffective assistance of counsel. We asked him or her to argue these laws and make these points and they failed. Blah, 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 blah. The point is, learn the information before something bad happens. Learn things to prepare and or prevent things. That is a wonderful gift that we have from God, the ability to think. And that's why I write these books, not so that way you can become dependent on me, but so that way you can depend on yourself if anything happens. And when I was in jail, I can tell you, the only person writing my arguments was me. I didn't say, oh, dang, I wish I wish I had Jalil's number so he can tell me what to say. Oh, man, I wish I had Rashad's number so he can tell me what to say. Oh, I wish I had so-and-so's. Nah. I knew what I knew, and I used it to the best of my ability. And by Allah's grace alone, I was released. And by Allah's grace alone, I was able to find case law that, that helped. And by Allah's grace alone, I'm still alive today. But that's the point. Uh, when you're in a situation where nobody can help you, because it will happen, you will be in a position where nobody is coming, nobody is helping, nobody's going to save you, and you're going to have to use your intellect to the best of your ability to try to yield results uh, with the understanding that uh, there's no power, no authority, and no way around except through Allah. And that is a hard lesson to learn. That is a hard lesson to realize. But at least if you prepare, then Allah will will stand out, uh, help you some way. And this is where it says in the Quran that Allah will never help a people until they change what is in themselves. So we have to do the work first in order to receive some type of blessing or assistance or help from God. We have to put in effort. There's no effect without a cause. you know. And if we actually want to change amongst our people, we will do what is necessary to make that change. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. There is a there's a cause and effect. There is a reap what you sow. There is a there is a relationship, a non tangible relationship between us and God that we cannot physically touch, but we can think about it, and we can see Him working through our life, and that is the evidence that we need. So if we actually want change, we would do what is necessary to yield that result, and if we do things that don't yield that result, then we can't complain about our conditions because we're not doing anything to change it. You know, I've seen, uh, never mind, I don't talk about that. If you're hungry, you don't go to the rap studio and make a, a song about how you're hungry. You make a sandwich. That's just what it is. If you're hungry, you don't go to the music studio and rap about your hunger. You make food. You find food. You grow food. So when we talk about ourselves as Moors, what are we doing to change our condition? The first step, obviously, is teaching. Now what? After people know that they're Moors and not black, now what? Now what do we do? And then people with no actual leadership skills will say, oh, you just keep studying. What? Noble Jarli said in the 101s, how is he teaching Moors? Oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. He basically said he came to uplift Moors. And the question was, how is he doing that? And the answer was, he's teaching them how to be themselves. Which means there's action involved. So what's the action? Because sitting down and reading, that's very passive. As a matter of fact, there's a hundred thousands of people in jail right now reading. Hundreds of thousands of people reading right now in jail. Still in jail. So so what's the next step? The next step is you apply what you know. That's the next step. And then once you apply what you know, you should see some results. Belief, faith, fruition. Believe, hmm, something's not right. Then you start studying. That's the faith. 
I know something's not right, but I'm having faith that in me learning these things, I have the potential to change my situation. And then there's fruition, fruition, fruit, to bear fruit. Then you apply what you know. Then you apply it. Only once you apply it is there actual change. That's it. Once you apply A squared plus B squared, then it equals C squared. If you don't apply it, then it doesn't equate. That's just mathematics. Right? So if we, because there's, you know, Moors, they claim to live by love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. But then in practice, they denationalize other Moors. In practice, they call other Moors by their straw name. In practice, they back by other Moors, call them disrespectful names, say things about them that are not true, share information about them that are not true. What about that is love? <clears throat> so if, if leaders of the Moorish movement are doing that, wherever there's a leader, there's a follower. So what are the followers of those people doing? The same exact thing. So if the followers of those people are doing the same exact thing, how is their love? How could there possibly be unity amongst Moors where Moors are backbiting each other, where Moors are fighting each other, where Moors are starting issues with each other? Whoever initiates that is the problem. So if they're not living by love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, then what, then what do we do about it? Well, if, and only if, we truly believed in the things that we claim to believe in, then we would have our own Moorish courts so that way we can enforce our own Moorish law and other Moors can file claim against other Moors in an actual Moorish court. So now, let's say, as an example, if there's a more, like, you know, there's plenty of Moors that they come to my Instagram and they try to fight me. I'm not going to any, but you'll never see me. You'll see me on Jalil's Instagram, joking, joking around because we're brothers. That's probably it. But you will never see me. Obviously, in the past, I've done it. Not so much, though. So. Uh, but since I had apologized for my past, previous actions... You have not seen me in any other Moore's Instagram or other social media, their YouTube, on none of their platforms, fighting them, causing problems with them. Even if I disagree with them, I do not go to their stuff and then say, you're wrong. No, I teach for my own platform. Some people say, hey, uh, as an example, the only reason I found out Moore's were arguing Muslim versus Muslim when I was in jail. So I wrote this book when I was in jail. Obviously, when I got out, I added a little more and then finalized it. But I'm talking to, you know, my loved ones. And they're saying more is arguing about Muslim versus Muslim as if there's a difference. I didn't even ask who. I don't care who. What? That's stupid. X, Y, Z. Here's the answer. Boom. Wrote it down knowing, OK, this is an ongoing problem. So let me address this problem because that's what scholars do. Here's the here's the language. Here's the etymology. Here's where the word is derived from. Here's some of the grammatical principles of that language. Here's all the proof. Here's the language, the etymology, the script, the transliteration. What more do you need? Etymology, etymology should fix it. The problem is these people who are propagating this fallacy, they're not using etymology. They're using the mystical. Well, see, the Muslim is the will of Allah. And Muslims submit to the will of a. What is that? What? That literally makes no sense. Because all of creation, including human beings, all of creation submitted to the will of Allah and is the will of Allah. Because if, if Allah didn't will it, then creation wouldn't exist. So all of creation is the will of Allah because Allah created it. Kun fayakun, being it is. It didn't, we didn't come up 
in and of ourselves. In fact, we're told that all things are thoughts of Allah. Okay, so which means Allah came first. So now, for us to even exist, we would have at first, when we were nothing, submit to the fact that Allah is creating us. Point blank, period. Which means we had to submit, period. Now, as we develop into full-bodied human beings, we have a degree of will. And we have the choice to not submit. But even in the choice to not submit, we are submitting. Because it was by Allah's will that you need oxygen. So you might not, you might not uh, greet your brother with peace. You might give him a frown or try to fight him. But the fact that you need to breathe to live is, you, is your body physically submitting to the will of God. So any philosophy other than that is illogical. And this is why, as an example, in the book, Allah, the creator of all things, is even warning the prophet. He says, O oh, prophet, do not be like the disbelievers and the hypocrites. Because there, there are people who claim to be believers. They claim to believe in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. But their actions prove that they're false pretenders in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. That's what, that's what hypocrisy means. means it means they're a, they're a, a false or they're, they pretend to believe in something, but they actually don't. So if I believe in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, I'm not going to disrespect anyone on the live. I'm not going to say, oh, well, you're a piece of crap. Oh, well, you're this and you're that. Because nobody likes to be called that. Even if they are, you, you try to encourage them to think about themselves differently so that way they don't behave like that because they're going to be what they think they are. So if, if we Moors teach each other that uh, we are great people with a great culture and we're able to do wonderful things, just remove the hatred from our heart, love instead of hate, and you'll start to see everything is ours. All of science and philosophy is ours. That we're, we're more than what these Europeans tell us we are. And we have the right to choose to be more. But when you choose to be less, then that's what you become. And then beyond that, beyond us choosing who we are, there's other people who chose to be themselves. And there's some people that, who, who chose to be good people. And there's some people that chose to be bad people. And, it's, and there's some people that are just misguided. So now how do we deal with that? Well, we're told to be kind. Period. There, there was people, there was, there was gang leaders in jail that I was around trying to help them get off drugs. Why? Because I seen, oh, wow, this person has 10 people under them. If I can get him to change, he'll stop issuing these orders that are hurting people. So you go to the big guy. <laughs> hey, man, stop doing that. Well, you don't say it like that. I got to know the person. Started to see his, his real values. And at, at his core, he wanted to be a good person. At his core, he wanted to be good. But the influence and the, and the desire and, the, and other things... We're having a stronger effect on him. So I've tried to focus on that good. You know, he would tell me things like uh, he wants to see his son. He's been in jail for most of his son's life. So as I tried to get him off, off drugs, I kept saying, L listen, you've told me countless times that when you're on the phone with your son, you tell him to not be like you. How about you show him how to be then? Stop these drugs for your son. So that way you can go home and see your son. Whoever your op is, you, you told me yourself, he keeps evading you. He just waits till you F up and go to jail. So stop going to jail. Stop even chasing that person. It has nothing to do with you. He ain't out there thinking about you, but you in here thinking about him. Come on, bro. What are you doing for your family? What are you doing for your son? You want your son to grow up the way you did? And he starts thinking, nah, that's, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. This is what I actually want. So you have to take, so you have to take the steps to actually get there. If you don't, you ain't getting there. And when you talk to people like they're human beings, they start to value themselves a little bit more. And since I was the only person in that jail talking to him like that, he was able to be sober for at least three days. That's a start, bro. That's a start. 
Now imagine if we had that type of compassion for each other generally, where people may have grown up and may not have felt valued by their parents, so they feel like they ain't shit. And they end up, end up choosing a partner who treats them as such. They ain't, you ain't crap. So then now there's just people just not valuing them, valuing themselves for nothing. How do we change that if not through love? We can't change it by saying, oh, that more is a fetus or that more is dumb or that more is stupid or that more is. We all went to public school. We all felt stupid, by we all were made to feel stupid by these teachers. So why would we keep fostering that? You know how many times I had conversations with our people saying, you know, where I see a, a beautiful intellect in any person. And I say, hey, man, you should implement that more or whatever. And then we start talking and talking and talking. And then we end up talking about school and they say how they were, they were basically taught in school that, that they're dumb to not trust their own thinking. Don't believe that. Get rid of that. How are we going to reverse all of the trauma that we've been through? How are we going to reverse it if not through love? And then how are we supposed to trust each other if when we receive some type of love from someone, they follow it up with some type of hurt or pain? What are we getting out of it? What are we doing? The Quran says, don't follow up a good deed with a bad deed. So why are we doing it? As an example, Moors give charity and then throw it in your face. Then don't give me the charity if you're going to throw it in my face. What was the point of doing it? And then we see from, from the creator of all things that he tells us that they do that to be seen. They do that and don't believe in Allah in the last days and the hereafter and the day of judgment. They don't even believe in it. They just do it because they know other people are looking and they want to be praised. So when are we going to start using the method of measure that the prophets gave us to use to measure each other? As, a, as opposed to merely following the the carnal customs and merely ideas of men, whereas, oh, we see that person doing good, so we, we're going to erase all the, all the public bad that they're doing. Jeffrey Epstein donated millions of, of dollars in, in charitable donations. Millions. More than I ever could. But guess what he did? You already know what he did. <laughs> so does the charity make him a good, pers a good person? No. So when we see Moors doing the same thing, Sowing dissent amongst their own people, disrespecting their own people, doing damn near everything that Allah said not to do. Why do we still see them as, oh, you're a hominous dominus leader? Where do you want to be led to? Because <laughs> I can tell you right now, it's way easier to be a bad person than it is to be a good person. Way easier. Someone says something mean to you or something rude to you. It's easy to pop off and say something worse. Easy. You know what's hard? Let me shut up. Peace for shot. Look, how many Moors? How many? Listen, listen, listen to what I'm about to say. There are Moorish American nationals out there right now. And this has been confirmed to me multiple times. Even when I first got home. They're saying things like, oh, where's Rashad at? Trying to sow some type of dissent or like, oh, yeah, where is he? How come he's not around Jamal anymore? Da, 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 da. How come this? How come that? Oh, to, to sow some type of suspicion. Yet there he is. Yet at my baby shower for my son, there he was. And then Moors will say, oh, move in silence. Don't show everything. So which one is it? The brother actually supports. He shows up. There were more when I when I went to uh, New Jersey to do, to do the charity with Sean De Niro's family. There were Moors there saying, "Oh wow, oh wow, listen, peace, brother Jamal. Oh, Moors were saying this and that and this and that, and but oh look, Rashad's right here with you guys and da da da, da this and that. So why listen to them? Why are you listen to the, to these people? For what? What you listening for? All they're doing is trying to sow dissent. To, to, to try to sow some type of... They're deliberately trying to sow disunity amongst Moors. Oh, Jamal's an agent. Show, me, show us the transcripts. Show me the transcripts where I made statements about Moors. Show me the transcript. Show me the transcript that when a Moor was, was at trial, I took the stand against him. Show me a transcript where a Moor... Uh, 
is in prison because of me. Because of something I said. Show me. Where I wrote a police statement against somebody. Show me. Show me that. Because when I was in jail, there's records. We had Lexus Nexus. I was able to look up as an example. Somebody t- came to my cell and said, hey, bro, so-and-so over there, first and last name, he's an FBI agent. Here's this case you can look up. Same first and last name. Same city this person is from. Same gang this person is associated with. So I said, okay. Took the little tablet that we had. Hold on, my daughter's crying for some reason. Took the tablet we had. Put in his first and last name. Searched the case. There it was. Him making statements against his own gang. Him saying, oh, word on the street is so-and-so. Left so-and-so. The word left in Boston means, you know, like you, you murdered someone and left them there. So they don't say the word murder. They just say left. Confirmed. Meaning it wasn't just hearsay. You okay, baby? What's the matter? What's the matter? You pooped? No, you peed? I don't know why she's she's pretending. Yes. What was I saying? Proof. So, so since the Moors can't prove that I've made any testimony, they have to say things like, "Oh, well, where's Rashad at? Oh, how come these Moors ain't around? How come I gotta? how, How come I gotta say who I'm talking to?" How come I got to tell you who's in my life? Let's be serious, bro. So when you see these people constantly saying this crap, showing pictures of Moors, oh, where are these people at? Oh, where are those people at? Bro, Rashad got a family. When you, when you see Rashad here, he lived here. He got a family. He got a kid to take care of. Why you want him to be around me all day? Why, why is that even a suspicion? Well, where's this grown-ass man at? Where's your, where's your wife at? Where's your family? Where's your kids? You see me with mine. Where's yours? The prophet wrote in the Quran, take unto, your, take unto thyself a wife and obey the ordinance of Allah. Take unto thyself a wife and be a productive member of society. So he's telling you twice. Where's your family at? How come you ain't taking care of yours? Why are you worried about where's Rashad? And where's Leonidas? And where's Moreno? And where are all these people at? I know where they at. Actually, talk to these brothers. Text them. Hey, how you doing, bro? Peace. Why are you letting, why are you letting these people so dissent amongst our nation and then you still support them? Why? That's not going to get us anywhere. You're supporting the wrong people. <laughs> You're supporting the people sowing dissent. You're supporting the people sowing disunity. You're supporting the people getting you out of the getting you off the path of Allah. The book says you place your hand in Allah's hand. So read his book for yourself. So that way when you see, oh, we're supposed to live by love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Oh, we're not supposed to backbite. We're not supposed to slander. We're not supposed to share misinformation. We're not supposed to call Moors outside of their Moorish name. This is how we live by love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So when you see Moors not doing it, you know that they're what? They're just not living by love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So you take what they say and you throw it in the garbage. Just like Jeffrey Epstein's charity. You take it and you throw it in the garbage. Theoretically, obviously, if the charity actually helped people, then you let it help people. But he's a trash person. That's my point. This is why I write books. To show you that this philosophy is more than just rhetoric. It can, be, it can be implemented in real life. It can be implemented in real time. It can be used to benefit you and your loved ones. Why would you support someone who... Every human being has a natural desire... A natural inclination towards the opposite gender. If you don't, clearly something's wrong. 
or you're at a point in your age where you're too old to, to even have that anymore. But when you don't, when you're not at that stage and you don't have a spouse, look at that person funny. Because it takes actual character to be with a member of the opposite sex, the opposite gender. Because you think different, you act different, you make different choices. So when you're around someone who's opposite of you by nature, you have, you have to have a degree of patience to make it work. You have to have a degree of sincerity to make it work. You have to have a degree of, of understanding and, 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 uh, and planning and, and thinking just to make it work. So now, if you don't have that, how could you possibly be the leader of anybody? You can't even handle conflict with the opposite gender. And you see people without spouses leading you where? How are they dealing with this natural desire to procreate with the opposing gender? How are they dealing with that? Are they, are they doing the exact deed that contributes to the single parent household amongst our community? Is that what they're doing? Are they committing that sin? How are they dealing with it? Because you can't say, well, I've mastered my lower self, but then you drink and you smoke. Because clearly you haven't. So how are they addressing, how are they addressing these real life problems? The real life problem of, of sadness. The real life problem of weakness. The real life problem of of misery, the real life problems of, of uh, depression, the real life problems of, of anxiety. How are they dealing with that? Because I can tell you right now, the Moors that are practice that are actually practicing Islam, not something that they themselves have invented. They're using that prayer to get through. They're using that remembrance of Allah to get through hardship because it's effing hard. That's what they're using. So what are they using? Moors that practice Islam are literally using, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be conscious of these five daily prayers to remind myself not to do bad things. So when my desire pe peaks its ugly face, I have to remember I have to pray in an hour. I have to pray in two hours. Uh, I just finished praying or the prayers in five minutes. Let me not commit this sin. Because I know that the creator of all things is watching everything that I do. I can't be worried about the next man. I have to worry about what I'm doing, what problems I'm causing amongst my people, how much slander I'm spreading amongst my people, how much hatred I'm spreading amongst my people, or how much peace I'm, try I'm trying to, uh, striving to foster amongst my people, or how much guidance I'm striving to give my people. You make that choice. What type of guidance are you trying to give your children? There, you got relatives right now struggling financially. I had a relative. They were struggling too. I said, relative, if you put your property in a trust, you're already going to file bankruptcy. You already plan on filing bankruptcy. If you put it in a trust, when you file bankruptcy, your house is no longer going to be your asset. So they can't use that against you. That's actually helping relatives. Hey, relative. Did you know that this IRS form makes you exempt from taxes from your paycheck? I know you already know we're all struggling. You can use this. And then they used it. I'm not online fighting more saying, oh, this and that. Nah, here, relative, use this. They watching me. They ain't watching you. <laughs> you can get while while the enemies of our people are watching everything I say and do. So many more are, are, are actually utilizing this information and it's benefiting them because they're looking at the wrong ones. And then, and then the Quran says, who's going who's gonna to give Allah a, a good loan so that way he may return it for you? Meaning, who's going to make sacrifices for the sake of Allah so that way he can reward you for that? Yet there's more Americans taking you away from that reward. Oh, don't do nothing for Allah. Do everything for yourself. How much pain and hurt have we, have we acquired from following our desires? How much? When are we going to learn from that? Damn, I, I keep doing X, Y, and Z and I keep getting hurt. And then when I keep doing X, Y, Z, when I feel the pain, I keep praying, God, please get me through this and I won't do it again. And then you do it again. 
And the Quran talks about that. <laughs> when, when adversity touches man, meaning human beings, they beg their Lord for help. And when, when, when their Lord alleviates that affliction from them, they say, oh, it's because I did such and such and such and such, and they forget their Lord. That is the nature of man. There's been plenty of times in my past I said, oh, man, I hope I don't have X, Y, and Z. God, please, if you make sure I don't have X, Y, and Z, I will never do it again. And then the next day I'm doing it again. That's the weakness of man. So our Lord tells us we have a... Uh, He's the most gracious, the most merciful, the oft forgiving. So you sin and you repent and he'll forgive you. So that way you can fight this weak nature that you have, the lower self. So that way you actively have tools to fight it. Because what happens is when you do things of the lower self, the lower self, the shaitan whispers to you. Oh, you already committed this sin. You might as well keep doing it. Oh, well, you're already a sinner. So you're a bad person. So you might as well keep doing it. Oh, so-and-so looked at you funny, punch him in the face. Oh, she said this about you, clap back. Oh, you feel bad, take a little hit of that. Oh, you feel bad, take a little sip of that. Look, so-and-so's doing it. Oh, is it put in a TV show? Don't you feel, oh man, I could really go for a smoke right now. That's the whisper. Yeah, do that, fight him, fight her, say that, say this. Oh, that. Oh, you're upset, just, just say it, just do it. That's the whisper of the, of the shaitan, the whisper of the lower self. There is, there is a prayer to fight that in the Quran. To fight the whisper of your lower self. That, that, that weak nature that we all have to fight it. What are those Moors doing to fight that? Because we all have it. We all have it. All of us have it. Not one person doesn't have it. In fact, we're told by the creator of all mankind that we all have it. So what are they doing to fight it? They're succumbing to it. They're saying, I'm just going to smoke. I'm just going to drink. I'm just going to insult that person because it makes me feel better about myself. I'm going to disrespect so-and-so because I feel better about myself. It's, it's, it's one of the last chapters of the Quran. It's, A'udhu bi rabin nas, maliki nas, ilahin nas, min shara wil was wasil khan nas, ali di waswi sufi suru nas, manal janati wa nas. I seek refuge in the Lord of man. The king of man, the god of man, from the whisper of the whisperer, who whispers in the hearts of man, from jinn and man. So you're seeking refuge in the creator of all things from the whisper of the evil that the jinn are whispering in your ear and the evil influence that you see other people doing. Like I, I, I used to smoke cigarettes in the, in the military and uh, I quit. 20, when I got out, 2015, it was around the last time I smoked a cigarette. And sometimes I'm watching a movie and I see people smoking. I'm like, dang, I can go for one. That's the whisper of the shaitan. Whisper of the lower self. So I have to use my will to resist that. Because I remember smoking. It used to feel good. And then next thing I see, I see myself moving because I can't sit still because I haven't had a cigarette in 20 minutes. Can't even watch a movie. I seek, re I seek refuge with the Lord and cherisher of mankind, the king of mankind, the God of mankind, from the mischief of the whisperer of evil who withdraws after his whisper. The same who whispers into the hearts of mankind amongst jinn and amongst men. So it's Kul means say. A'udu birabin nas. Malikin nas. Elahin nas. Min sharil waswasil khanas. Ali di yuwaswi su fi sudarun nas. Menal janati wan nas. So, as we're fighting our lower self, we also see other people. Who are not fighting their lower self And we have to deal with that So how do we deal with it? Recognize, okay That is the behavior and characteristics of the lower self It makes me mad It hurts my feelings It makes me upset I feel like there's an injustice happening to me But 
let me stay quiet and let me be patient for the sake of Allah alone because I don't want to say something mean and say something bad. That's going to ruin my own good deeds because my Moorish American prophet said, let your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds and when you die, everything will be okay. And then the Quran that he said that is the revealed word of God says, do not follow up a good deed with a bad deed. So let me do my best to not respond in an in a, in a ill way. That's Islam. That has the potential to solve our problems, all of our problems. Because the biggest problem we have is infighting amongst Moors. So let's stop that. Which means it starts with ourselves first. Hi, baby girl. Huh? No, I'm talking about myself. I am. I'm talking about the characteristics of the lower self and how certain people do it without having to say their names because I don't have to. This is a, this is a characteristic amongst people in general. It's just I'm using what's happening to Moors right now that other people tell me that people are saying because it's not like I'm on other people's pages looking for problems. I'm minding my own business. I unfollow a lot of people. But other Moors are DMing me saying, this is what's being said. That's what's being said, and this is what's happening. So we have to be aware of those things. And I'm telling Moors the nature of that, and how in comparison to what God has told us to do, and what God has told us to live by, that we shouldn't follow that. I'm not disrespecting anyone, calling them out of their names, or the like. And I'm explaining how my lower self wants to do that, my lower self is trying to whisper to me to respond in this manner, respond in that manner, and how that is wrong. And how by using the tools of Islam, those are some of the things that I'm personally using to combat that. Because if we all did that, then things like that wouldn't happen. If, if the individuals who are doing the slandering and doing the backbiting and doing the this and that, if they actually lived by the lessons, it wouldn't be happening because they would be resisting it. And then we could actually foster unity amongst ourselves. An actual brotherhood to, to resist the real problems. Because in, in, in a, uh, if you back up from the problem, you look at it generally, we're, we're, we're suffering from conditions that we feel like we can't change. So it's easier to fight people on the same level as us who are also oppressed as opposed to standing up to the actual oppressor. So with that understanding, it, may, it makes it a tad bit easier to not deal with problems with more problems. <laughs> and I use as an example several times when I was in jail. You know, we're all in jail. None of us want to be there. We all got our own problems and we're all mad. And my cellmate was saying, oh, so-and-so keeps looking at me crazy. You know, he thinks I'm a B-I-T-C, you know, all the rest. He thinks I'm a punk. He thinks I'm this. He thinks I'm that. I'm like, hey, bro, did you talk to him? He said, no, but I can, you know. I said, no, 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 hold on. Did you talk to him? Yes, no. no. So he didn't say you're this and say you're that and disrespect you in any way. You're thinking it yourself. <laughs> you're thinking he's calling you this. So in your mind, he's calling you that. And it's not happening. Right? So then I put it into perspective. Bro, do you want to be in here right now? He said, no. Uh, did a judge order you to come here? He said, yeah. So what happened to that person? You think he wants to be here? He said, no. Did a judge order him to be here? He said, yeah. Aren't you upset about that? He said, yeah. So you don't think he's upset about that? He said, yeah. And then look around, bro. We're trapped. We're stuck in here. Right? Everybody's mad. So we're looking like this mad. And since we're just surrounded by each other, we have no choice but to look at each other. So all of us are victims of something. Some people need to be there. But a lot of us are victims of something. We're in a situation we don't want to be in. And all we see is other people who also don't want to be in that situation or also pent up and angry. What do you think is, is bound to happen? Something bad. So I had to you know, encourage that brother, relax. None of us want to be here. We're all upset and we have no choice but to look at each other. So we're seeing that expression on each other's face. This is why in Islam, it's considered a good deed when you greet your brother with a smile. Why? To prevent that. <laughs> That's how easy it works. So now you have the 
The intangible It's a good deed to meet your brother with a smile And then the tangible result of When you look at a brother like this Cause you really just mad about your own situation Like that judge really put me in here That judge really did X, Y, and Z to me And then you're looking at another brother like this And they're looking at you like Why are you looking at me like that And you're like well I'm not even thinking about you So why are you talking to me like that And then he's like well why are you talking to me like that And then you both stand up and then now what Then what? Do one. Exactly. Then what? Do one. Then what happens? Do one. What happens? What happened? What happened? Nothing. Happened. So now, Shaitan is whispering in our ear, oh, he thinks you a B word because he's looking at you like that. And then you're like, well, I ain't no B word. He can't look at me like that. And then you say something. What'd you say something for? Because Shaitan was oh, whispering no. in your ear. And it worked. Oh no! And it worked. It so we can so we can say, "I live by love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice." All we want, we can say it all we want. But what tools are you using to actually fight the lower self? Because that is a real life situation where people could have got hurt. I know. I'm just turning the cameras on. People could have got hurt. And if it wasn't for someone who recognized that this, this, these are all characteristics of the lower self, to talk to that person and say, hold on, back up, brother, think about it like this, something bad would happen. And unfortunately, that happens too often. And we can blame other people all we want, but those are our actions. Those are choices that we're making. We can blame Whoever we want, oh, we're oppressed and we're colonized and we're this and we're that. But when you go out of your way <laughs> to disrespect your fellow brother and sister, that's nobody's fault but yours. And that's what's destroying our community. That's why the Quran says no backbiting, no gossiping, no spying on each other, no calling each other outside of your name or outside of their names. Because those are the things, those are the principles that's destroying our nation. And then look, and then look at our people. Go to, go to any social media platform that, that moors are on and look what they're doing to each other. <clears throat> oh, this one's dirty and that one's dirty and this one's dirty and that one's dirty and this one's dirty and that one's dirty. And where's the proof at then? Where's the proof? Where's the evidence that this one is an agent? Where's the transcript where they put them more away? Where's it at? And since it don't exist, they'll say, well, where's Rashad at? How come Rashad ain't around? I bet. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, that's your evidence? Okay, upload the picture of Rashad at our baby shower then, if that's your evidence. Why is everybody so obsessed with Rashad? I don't know. I think they like him. He's tall. He got nice hair. He's a good dude. Maybe they swing that way. I don't know. I don't hear girls saying it. I don't know. Right, baby? Nowadays, it's the trend. <laughs> Even Sinbad like Rashad. He's like, that's a tall tree. <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? Um, <laughs> he said, the absent of Rashad equals AJ. <laughs> that is mathematical. That is mathematical genius. <laughs> That is mathematical genius. Uh, <laughs> oh man, baby girl, I love you. Anyway, um, this is why <laughs> when Allah has uh, a message for us, He sends it. In the form of a human being that lives by the message So that way we have an example of it So when, when, when we're told to fear Allah alone We have an example of that When we're told to give for the sake of Allah We, we have an example of that When we, when we read uh, to bow to Allah We have an example We see what that looks like When, when we read um, to be dutiful to your spouse and, your, and be kind to your children And be fair to, uh, to people We see what that looks like through the actions of people who are claiming to be leaders. 
And when they're claiming to be leaders and they're not living by that, well, then you, you remove their title of leadership. <laughs> You're a sweet big sister, baby. Anyway, what was I saying? What is that? Uh, oh, it's right there. Blue Never mind. Chips. <laughs> it's purple. I don't know why I call it blue. True. Purple chip. Anyway, I'm being distracted. <clears throat> She's cute. It's easy to get distracted. Yay! Oh. <laughs> so cute. It's so cute. I'll open the floor up for, for questions now. Hi, fat boy. What you looking at? If you got questions asked, let me, let me put it in the chat so people know. Uh, Why don't you open the behind you? Because the sun is making the... Uh, okay. Not the sun, but the brightness outside. The sun. <laughs> well, the sun's over there. That's why I said. It's not the sun. It's the light from the sun. When's the next court date? Uh, I have a court date January 22nd for Rhode Island. And then uh, my trial date is scheduled for February 26th. For Massachusetts? Yeah, Massachusetts, yeah. So for the Rhode Island case, I'm still waiting uh, for the warrant and discovery. They haven't showed me the warrant. They haven't produced the warrant in Juju's case. And they haven't produced the warrant in Moreno's case. Uh, so January 22nd, I have to deny uh, a deal on the record. Because <clears throat> they're trying to offer me something. And I'm going to tell the judge that I can't make an informed decision because I haven't seen the warrant. Because if a warrant doesn't exist, that means they had no right to be where they were, nor to touch my wife. And this should be dismissed. Because it's been three years, almost four years, and none of us have seen a warrant. None of us. And when Moreno asked uh, for the warrant, he got an affidavit of the cops requesting one, which is not a warrant. That's a request for one, but that's not a warrant signed by a judge saying, yes, you have permission to go to this place and look for this person. So that's what that is. Uh, judge Deacon, uh, in his order, he said that my conduct was is protected by the Second Amendment. So this is a Massachusetts case. The judge in Massachusetts said that my conduct was protected by the Second Amendment. But the arms that I had were weapons of war that are not commonly owned and possessed by law-abiding citizens. And based his denial of my motion on that. And he used a case from 2009 in California where they said that the AR-15 style rifle is not protected by the Second Amendment. But the federal courts in 2021 clearly specified in California, the same California court, federal court specified that these arms are protected by the Second Amendment. And they said it emphatically that it's protected. And then the day after Deacon made his order denying my motion, that same court and the same judge the next day issued another judgment reaffirming that those arms are protected by the Second Amendment. And they are commonly owned and they're they're more common than a Ford F-150. And that every time you see a Ford, not Ford F-150, a Ford F-Series vehicle, every time you see one of them, imagine 100 AR-15s. That's what you're seeing. So... This judge clearly used outdated case law that since Bruin has changed and even before Bruin has changed. So he used case law from 2009 in California. But in 2021, the federal courts of California said, nope, the, these arms are protected. And then uh, October 19th of last year, the day after Deacon made his order denying my motion, saying that these are weapons of war, not commonly owned. The federal courts reaffirmed their decision in 2021 
post Bruin saying these are commonly owned uh, arms by law abiding citizens. And then the judge, he kept using uh, case law against people that were already convicted felons uh, against me. And I've never been convicted of any felonies. Uh, so he's using case law that's not applicable to me. Uh, and <clears throat> August 2023, there was a judge in Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, Judge Coffee, who he ruled that a New Hampshire resident who was uh, lawfully carrying uh, his arm and entered into the state of Massachusetts should not be treated as a felon for simply entering the state of Massachusetts. Therefore, the statute uh, is un unconstitutional as it applies to him. Uh, once I got that case, I wrote an emo emergency motion. I sent it to my standby counsel to file it for me uh, because it you know, cost me paper and ink and, and money to mail it. And I told him, hey, I just, got I just found out this decision. File this emergency motion for me so that way I can argue it. And he didn't do it. So this recent motion that I filed is arguing that uh, I didn't get the opportunity to make this argument in my favor since the coffee decision before Deacon made his, his decision because my standby counsel didn't do his job. Uh, so I shouldn't be punished for that. And you should let me make the argument before trial. Do you still need those letters? Uh, which letters? Are you talking about letters of support? Sure. Sure. Yeah, so uh, we went to a protest. Uh, well, it wasn't... Yeah, we went to a protest at DCYF because 25 children go missing a day under DCYF, the Department of Child... The Department of Children, Families, youth. and Youth. Wait. DCYF, children, youth, yes. and families. So they're the people that take your children if you if you're neglecting them or or abusing them. Uh, but they're not treating DCYF cases as a crime. But it is a crime because if a child is being neglected or abused, that is a crime. But they're not treating it as a crime. So they're taking people's children without proof of neglect or abuse. They're just taking them, and then when they take them, they place them with someone. And then they pay that person to watch the children as opposed no. to just paying the family to help no. support the children where there is no evidence of abuse. And then, you know, I've been to court cases where families have asked us to show moral support and we show up and they're not letting the family members speak. They're not letting, you know, the grandparents speak. Uh, they're not letting anybody speak on behalf of the children. And then when the judges make decision, they kick everybody out and close the door so it's not open in public hearings. So we went to the DCOF building to protest peacefully. Then we walked to the state house, and on our walk to the state house, there were Providence police officers that pulled up next to me and said, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" We said, "We're we're we're uh, we're protesting the fact that 25 children a day go missing on a DCYF care, and the government's doing nothing about it." And he said, "Wow, well, I have children too. If I wasn't in uniform, I would be supporting you." And then he escorted us to the state house. When we got to the state house, Will Turbot was arrested for no reason. My wife was upset and said, hey, what you're doing is wrong. Followed the police outside of the state house, then came back in and then we left. And then when that happened, they tried to say that she beat up 15 state troopers by herself. And uh, and they the violent, the violent fugitive task force of the uh, Rhode Island state troopers came to my house without a warrant looking for my wife. And they weren't allowed in without the warrant. So now I'm being charged. Inshallah, my victory only comes through Allah Because trust me, I used everything in my intellectual prowess While I was in jail to write for myself And uh, it didn't work So it's, it's Allah alone I take it as, as a test It's like I take, you know, going back to the previous topic The people slandering and disrespecting me That is a test for me by my Lord who says, I showed you the knowledge, I showed you the way to be peaceful and respectful and to not engage in that type of behavior. And it's happening. So now I'm being tested by my Lord to not engage in that and to not proliferate that disunity and, and, and fighting back and forth with people. So that's why I choose to talk about the philosophy of it and how it's destructive. And, you know, potentially things 
and tools to use to avoid it, as opposed to being involved in going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <clears throat> it's all a test for me. I don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all talking about a movie? How can any arms not be protected by the Second Amendment? So things like sawed-off shotguns, things like squad automatic weapons, uh, the, um, you know, things like uh, grenades, things like nuclear weapons, those things have been decided by the Supreme Court uh, are not protected by the Second Amendment and no... Uh, no common person should have those things. That's that's kind of their argument. Um, although I do believe having my four years active duty military experience at a squad automatic weapon is is sufficient for uh, a civilian militia. Uh, so I think I mean even even in states like Maine, uh, you can own a squad automatic weapon, but in most states you can't. So there's just a a dichotomy of people's opinions of which arms are protected and which arms are not. <clears throat> and the Supreme Court, you okay? Yeah. The Supreme Court has already noted that uh, the lower courts of Massachusetts interpretation of Heller is dangerous to everybody's uh, liberties. Most well, definitely will and watch this switch up. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Okay. Inshallah, man. It's like I said, it's not, it's not up to me. I mean, uh, you know, when, when, uh, what was, what was, what was the first judge that denied my motion? H not Hagen. Le, Le Boxen? Le, Bo Le, Le Boudreau. When Boudreau denied my motion and said that, um, my interpretation of the Second Amendment was wrong, the next day, the United States Supreme Court came out with Bruin, which affirmed everything I said. When Judge Deacon said that, uh, the arms I bore were not protected by the Second Amendment, the next day, the same court that he referenced, came out with a decision saying that the types of arms I had were protected by the Second Amendment. So I do believe that, you know, Allah's work in his will, uh, but I see it more so as a test for me, whereas other people who shall remain nameless have folded like lawn chairs. Uh, I believe this is a test for me. And whatever the outcome, I submit my will to the will of Allah, so I don't really have a choice. <laughs> it's not like I can change the will of God, you know. That's fine. <laughs> okay, I get so I'm reading the comments out of context. I get why you're saying she ho because she allegedly beat up 15 state troopers by herself, right? So she she went out. I'm the equalizer. So on the <laughs> she's the equalizer. So on the way out of the state house where there's cameras, she beat up 15 state troopers while they were escorting Will Turbot out, who was under in handcuffs. Came back into the state house. They, she came in without going through the security check So they told her to go through So she came in the state house Went through the security thing Wasn't arrested And then at trial There was zero video footage Of her assaulting 15 state troopers And, and when you read the police statements They said that I am her associate And that I've said anti-police anti rhetoric uh, So that's why they did what they did Because the police showed up, not in uniform, no bad showing. They came in and, and just a hoodie, that was a bait and scully, and yeah, and jeans. So you couldn't tell that they were cops. And then they sent a crackhead to the door to knock on the door for, first. And in their report, they said we were being solicited. And then they just and then they seen her and then they came in the house and then they came to the house. Before that point and to this day. There has never been any other solicitor to come to the door. So what criminals do is something called a bait and switch. So they'll send, they'll send someone innocent looking to your door to knock on the door. You open it and then the goons rush in. That's what they try to do. And then they try to say that I was, you know, I had anti-police rhetoric, you know, ideologies. So that way when they did that, I would have responded in defense of myself and then they could have, you know, probably murdered me or tried to assassinate me. Because when they arrested me, uh, 
Next thing I know, the whole block is flooded with state troopers. <laughs> when there was no in marked police cars. Right. So they so they could have came to my house in marked police cars, but they were trying to provoke an incident. And since I actually strive to live by love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, I'm not going to arbitrarily transgress and hurt somebody for no reason until they stri strive to hurt me because that's just what I believe in and that's what my religion uh, commands of me. So that strategy didn't work. So they used my wife... As a way to get to me. Because the misdemeanor warrant, the misdemeanor warrant was for her. And then they gave me $20,000 bail. And they didn't give her anything. Yet she's the one that beat up 15 state troopers and she was released no bail. So what was the $20,000 for me for then? And how come you, they sent me to the ACI? Anyway. And why is my name mentioned on a warrant for her? I didn't beat up 15 state troopers. <laughs> I'm not the equalizer. <laughs> she is. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, the Cointel Pro in conjunction with, in collusion with state police. They're trying to do whatever. They're trying to harm me and get me to uh, turn coattail and fold like a lawn chair and do all the things that I just can't do. Because I believe my father taught me principles and I do my best to, to, to live by those principles. And I believe that there is a God out there who also commands us to live by certain principles. And I do my best to live by those principles. Anyway. Someone said, I met someone recently who said that the reason our papers and things don't work in court is because we are not operating under equity surety ship. That is a flat out lie. The reason why our paperwork is not working is because we're dealing with criminals who have occupied our land. And if they started to live honorably, they would no longer be occupying our land and no longer be colonizing us. That's why it's not working. It works. But when you're at the ATM and someone has a gun behind your back saying, give me your money, you're not going to turn around and say, what you're doing is wrong. And they're not going to say, hmm, I have a family to feed and I want your money, but what you said was compelling, so I'm not going to steal your money. You're, we're dealing with criminals. That's like saying the reason why the Palestinian paperwork is not working in Israeli courts is because they didn't authenticate their birth certificate. No, it's because the terrorist state of israel is saying you can't call yourselves palestinian you can't fly your own palestinian flag and you can't even speak your own palestinian language that's why it's not working so what they're doing is they're using what i have coined intellectual cowardice to hide the fact that they're not willing to actively resist terrorism by saying we just need to think harder they're in dishonor because they're on, they're on our land violating our human rights, our right to self-governance, our right to self-identification, our right to self-autonomy. They're violating those things. So when we attempt to govern ourselves, they're going to actively ensure that we don't. That's why they have things like the counterintelligence program where they're going to assassinate our leaders who encourage us to be militant nationalists who strive to uh, self-govern and be self-autonomous because – Right now, we're under them, and in order for them to rule, we need to be under them. We're trying to say, no, 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 we have the right to govern ourselves. So in any, in any attempt for us to do that, they're resisting as if it's not real and as if it doesn't work and as if it's sovereign citizen terroristic rhetoric when it's not. It's everything that they claim to believe in when they founded the United Nations and adopted the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. They're claiming to believe in those things, but when we implement them, they actively fight us when we're doing it peacefully, which means they're violating their charge. They're in breach of fiduciary duty. They're the criminals. That's what's happening. Point blank, period. Anything else? is a lie anything else is a fallacy anything else someone's trying to deceive you as if they're more intelligent than you are no you see injustice you see it happening don't think it's because you did something oh i'm only being robbed at the atm because i have two dollars no you're being robbed at the atm because he or she is a criminal they're not recognizing your your uh supported case law by their own courts because they're criminals the massachusetts superior court Chief of Police of Shelburne stated that since there is no individual right to keep and bear arms, to license it is not unconstitutional. The Massachusetts Superior Court said that. 
The Supreme Court said there has always been a, the United States Supreme Court, not the Supreme Court of Massachusetts, the United States Supreme Court said there has always been an individual right to keep and bear arms, which would mean by that logic, by the, by the Massachusetts own Superior Court logic, to license the right is unconstitutional. Because they said, since it's not an individual right, it's okay to license it. The Supreme Court said, nope, it has always been an individual right. So, mean, so meaning by that logic, that means it's not okay to license it. Yet, what are they still doing? They're licensing it. Is that not because I'm not an equity surety secured party creditor? No, because these people are criminals. She figured out how to break them. I told you she can break those. I think she stepped on it. Because it's hard to snap it a little bit. <clears throat> He teaches, he teaches classes and stuff and charges a lot of money for them, but he's saying that that's why we're not winning our cases, even though our paperwork may seem right. Has he shown you case dismissed, case dismissed, case dismissed, case dismissed, case dismissed? Has he shown you that? Here's what I wrote to the courts. Here's what the courts responded with. Has he shown you that? Because if you go to riseofthemores.org, you'll see paperwork where countless of Moorish Americans have said X, Y, and Z, and then results happen. Where other Moors are saying it. Not me. Look at, look at Rashad Bay. They offered, they said, Rashad, listen here, buddy. <laughs> Even though you haven't been around Jamal, <laughs> we're going to offer you five years. Was it five years? Rashad, if you're still here, please confirm if it was five years or not. They charged him with the same stuff they're charging me with, with the exception of, of uh, the, the wearing of body armor during commission of a felony. What? Yeah, his case was dismissed. He was, he's, being the char he's being charged with the same things I'm being charged with. Right? They said, listen here, buddy. We're going we're gonna to cut you a deal. And as a matter of fact, Rashad, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite you. Even though, even though you don't be around, so I'm an agent. I'm still going to invite you. All right. So, we're on the way to court for Moreno Bay. Pull Rashad over for no reason. They search his trunk for no reason. They find his Second Amendment right. They find it. Search his, his locked containers for no reason. Search it. They said, hey, you hang around with Jamal. Huh? <laughs> they, said, they said, did Jamal kick you out of Rhode Island? <laughs> what? They really they, they really, bro, they really had to sit down with me. They, they really, so, they, so I was in jail, so... They said that I had a lawyer visit, you know, quote unquote. I'm like, lawyer, attorney visit? I don't have no lawyer. So that's when I went to the room. Two FBI agents sat me down. They was like, look, man, we're not here for you. We're not here for Jamal. I'm not even charged. Yeah. I wasn't even charged with nothing. Listen, I'm you, like, no, you in custody. We're charging you with gun charges, but we're here for Jamal. Yeah. Bro, so I'm like, look, man, I don't know anything, man. Like, I don't got no time for this. So as I'm getting up leaving, it's like, did, did he kick you out of the Rhode Island? <laughs> I'm looking at him. I'm like, no, let me just get out of here, bro. bro what am I? Go. Am I the governor? <laughs> am I? What? Do, am I a congressman here? Like, what? What authority do I have to kick anybody out of this colony? <laughs> hey, the tell is finest, man. So, 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 is finest. so they. So, this happened 2019 or 2020. This was um. It happened in 2020 on the highway. Yeah. 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 yeah 2020 on the highway, and then it got dismissed the beginning of January. Right, right before the proper birthday. I think it was like the 4th or something like oh, that. Oh, 2022, or the right? Yeah, uh, 2023 23? last year. So, 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 right. So before, so before they dismiss it, they come to you and say, listen here, buddy, I got a deal of a lifetime. <laughs> Just plead guilty and we'll give you three to five years. And what did you say? Three to five years? I'm like, man, we can take it to <laughs> And then what happened? It got dismissed because <laughs> all he tried to do was just kept going through court date to court date, keep trying to push stuff back. They didn't have no evidence or anything yeah, like that. Trying, they were trying to scare you. They were trying to scare me. It's all, it's all scare tactics. It's just, you just got to, you know, stick to your guns and, you know, the knowledge that you learned. No, I, I, I can speak for myself on that one, though. And when, when every, every time you was in court, who spoke for you? I spoke for myself. And was it because... Jamal said, "Yo, listen, Rashad, you gotta, you gotta stand up for yourself and be a man." Was was it because I said that, or was it because you're a man and you just stood up for yourself? Which one? Well, it, it, it's because I'm a man. <laughs> you know, so now I follow the proper instruction. You know, yeah, right. Every, everything is everything is bought to us. You know, we just gotta fit the time and the, the work in. You know, to, to realize that. You know, so it's you not attacking each other and stuff. So you believe that you have 
had rights that were violated. And yeah, absolutely. You didn't need another man to tell you that your rights are being violated. You just, you studied on your own. You learned things to the best of your ability. You were violated and you said, hey, what's happening to me is wrong. What's happening to me is wrong. And you wrote your own documents. When the judge said, listen here, buddy, I think you need an attorney. You said, nah, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. You studied, you looked up case law, you wrote your own stuff, you prepared your own documents. And then what happened? Yep. Were, were you released from jail? I, I was released. I was released. <laughs> like, like, especially after the, um, so the first time when it happened, yeah, I was in there for like, three days, you know, because the whole thing, they were just saying that, oh, uh, we have to have a dangerous hair to see if you're dangerous to society. I'm like, I'm not even from out here. Yeah. We're having a dangerous, having a dangerous hair. <laughs> I'm a dangerous to society now in the area that I'm not even from. So yeah. basically they just let me go. And that's when, you know, sat in jail for another 90 days for an alleged probation violation, which I was never on because you can't be on probation and you've never been convicted of yet. You know, that makes sense. And, so and, and yeah. no judge signed a probation order, and your signature wasn't yeah. on wasn't on a probation order. My so signature, no no judge signature, and a probation officer signature has to be on there too for in order to be on probation. None of that is legible, and no signatures on there, so it's basically null and void. Yeah, you know, they and, use. And, and several several of the court appearances that you made on the threat, dress, and coercion because they physically had you in chains. Uh, I had the copy of whatever they were talking about with nobody's signature on it. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this alleged probation conditions nobody signed yeah. so how, how how is a contract that's not signed enforceable it's not because we know yeah we dealing with organized criminals you know people always want to say oh you got to do it you got to put in this paperwork that didn't work because you didn't do this paperwork like no yeah. it's not because of that are you sure it's not because you were in what she, what she say what that brother say equity <laughs> It's nonsense. I don't even know what it was. It's nonsense. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> Equity something. Yo, yeah, these these dudes make making up all types of stuff. Nowadays, Equitable, man. That's crazy. Equitable surety ship. Equitable surety ship. Yeah, I don't some know what that's supposed to mean. Type of, some type of equity court term or something. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> if if you talk about surety ship, that means something is put up as collateral for something else. If you're talking about equity, you're talking about something that's proportional and balanced. You were in cuffs and yeah. in a colonial court that you're not a citizen of. There was no equity involved at all. So how could you be, how could you be held surety for something if there wasn't even equity involved in the first place? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, yeah. that's, that's a whole contradiction. Yeah, you can't. That's not even possible. If you're not in a court of equity, then equity don't apply. <laughs> you're in a colonial court where they're tyrants. Anyway. Hey, bro, where you been? I think Jamal's an agent because you haven't been around. What's up? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I'm, have... I'm, I'm actually going to come down there like in the next week or so. You know, all right. You already know how it is on my end. I've just nah. been working. I know. Yeah, going going back and forth to Philly, visiting the fam. Yeah, I mean, hey, hey this is a, we haven't even talked. This is the first time we talking publicly. We don't even, we don't, I, don't even, I barely oh, yeah. know you now. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't show up in my baby shower or nothing. You ain't show up for, you ain't oh, support yeah. or nothing. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm an agent now, man. I'm, I'm ah, that, that means I am. Because yeah. if you haven't been around, that means I'm one. <laughs> <laughs> somehow, somehow that's that means. Hey. I don't know how. If hey, people gonna assume that, man, when they don't see people in pictures and stuff like that, or don't see stuff on social media, people automatically think that you know people just separated. Bro, you know what's crazy? So they they'll 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 think that, but then when I post stuff, they'll say you gotta move in silence. Yeah. Everything <laughs> don't gotta be posted. <laughs> so what, what kind is it, genius? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you want me to do? <laughs> and, and again, that's why it's so important to understand that there's nothing worthy of worship except for God. Don't don't worship other people's opinion of you, because then you're just going to be trying to please other people, and you're never going to be happy. Yeah, you know? like just like remember when we went to uh, New Jersey, the, there was a brother saying the same thing. Like, oh look, Rashad's right here. People were saying you don't even talk and this and that and this and that. And look, he's right here. Like, yeah, bro, what are you listening to people's gossip for? Yeah. Uh, exactly. We even uh, from New Jersey. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't do nothing. We don't go nowhere. We only stay in the house. If people want to know, go straight to the source. Ask the person directly, rather than bouncing off people, off people that don't even know the person or anything like that. <laughs> don't know nothing. Yeah. Like I said, they're just trying to show dissent and disunity. 
Yeah. Juju said, I, I don't even post my children, so I must be lying about them, too. No. <laughs> How come he ain't post pictures of his son? He must be an agent. Okay. <laughs> my whole family knows I have one. <laughs> but you don't. So that that confirms your belief about who I am, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> even though when my wife was alone with my daughter, was you around? Nope. So why would I care about impressing you? Ah, cool. Mm -hmm. That People don't understand that. Like, they think I owe them something for nothing in return. Like, nah, bro. The more I supported, I contact them. Like that like that brother right there, he can tell you every time he calls me, I answer. When Rashad hits me up, I wasn't talking about you, I was talking about someone else in the, in the chat. Fifth star. He calls, I answer. Why? Because mm -hmm. when I was down, when I was bad, when my wife needed support, he did his best to support, point blank, period. Yeah. So you showed, you showed me love and I don't even know you? When I couldn't show love in return, that's that's real. And you don't throw it in my face, that's real love. You don't bring up, hey brother, remember I did this on this date and kept doing nah bro. That's yeah. real love. That's 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 real friendship. That's real love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Not not hey bro, every month you was gone. I sent X, Y, and Z, so now you owe me something, or now you gotta pay it back. No, nah, I don't want that kind of charity because that's not charity, that's a loan that I didn't agree to. Yeah, that's when it's not genuine it's not from the heart and then like you know he's not looking for something in return too that's how you know that it's real yeah facts that, that's a fact oh yeah, yeah. And it's, 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 it's like that. Quarter, just to be clear because i know sometimes i say since i have the context you know you and i had a conversation so we already have we have that context other people don't <clears throat> so yeah rashad definitely supported definitely showed up yeah and when other people didn't when you know a lot of people didn't even check up on, on my wife knowing that i have a daughter that was three months old at the time didn't even care to didn't even care <laughs> yeah you know, just just you know people say oh yeah we love rise of the moors oh yeah we love you brother jamal this and that and this and that and this and that and then when times got rough for my family i seen who really showed love you know yeah. what i'm saying and that's literally what it says in the quran that allah will allah will put us through uh, trials and hardships so that way we can have witnesses amongst ourselves to see who's tried and who's true and who's real and who's not mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that's the fact, bro. i'm, I'm kind of happy that people were exposed to who they really are because i don't want your fake support anyway because it's fake what you going to support me for to throw it in my face well then that's not support that's like me that's like me going going outside right find a homeless person who's hungry and feeding him and then the next day showing up saying hey bro you owe me he's gonna look at me like i'm crazy yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i want my sandwich back you got to return that to me <laughs> come on bro we give charity we don't ask for crap in return we go to we went to different states to give charity so there's no possible way to ask people for anything in return <laughs> yeah bro it's a fact, fact, man you, you generally care about people you know and you know what they're going through and so forth like even, even with me shit like i was all the way from philly you invited me out to your house like man, bro you can come up here you can live with us you know yeah. we trying to get it we trying to get a community out here and so forth we try and build come together and get some things done <laughs> Yeah, that's, and then when we had, when love, we had our, our personal differences, we talked about it, and it was all love, and it was all all we needed was a conversation. Yeah, that's all it is. Because, like I said, it's the it's the, it's the whisper of the lower self, the shaitan saying, "Oh, how come this and how come that? How come this and how come that?" Nah, let's talk. Because mm -hmm. it's it's uh, I forgot what the hadith is, but Prophet Muhammad said it's 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 close to disbelief to be suspicious of of your brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you suspicious for? If there's no proof, then you have no right to be suspicious. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, that's a fact. So you can start off with a conversation just so we can. Yeah, yeah man, our kids, yeah. our kids went to say, well, our, our, excuse me, our children, because we don't have baby goats. Our children went in the same room with each other. You know, that's that's what Morse, Morse information is really about. Mm -hmm. Let's have our children know each other. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> Let's be around each other's children and family because that's what this is about. Yeah. Family. That's a fact, bro. Not yeah, Islamism for the pictures and nothing else, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> but, bro, I'm about, to, I'm about to head to work right now. All right. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to definitely talk and build some more. Yeah. All right. Peace. All right. Peace, bro. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Well, there's Rashad. <laughs> We can't say, where's this brother at? And where's that brother at? And how come this? And how come that? Uh, yeah, yeah, but people are still saying it. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. They're still going to say, where's your child? Where's your boys? Even though. Yeah, yeah.
<laughs> it's crazy. Let's see what other questions we have. <laughs> Jello said I took pictures. <laughs> to bear witness. Nah, bro, that was the art. That was AI generation of Rashad. I was that was typing his responses to the keyboard that's not in front of me. <laughs> Let's see daily. Any other questions? I forgot how we even got to that subject. My case is on record. All three of my so-called warrants were dismissed. That's great. All the people I put on notice is on record. I even had a so-called Moorish American detective. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> a Moorish American detective? That's crazy. <clears throat> and I don't know how legitimate the posts on his IG are because they are not solidified examples. That's that's what you have to that's what you have to concern your, yourself with. Proof of claim. Where is the proof that what you said works at an exhibit a look i talk about putting your house in a trust All right. putting your house in a trust standing up for what's right studying laws standing up for your loved ones here's my loved ones going through adversity and then boom they, they weren't kicked out of the house that they've owned since 1999 got us out of the projects into a home the best way that they could and then the colonists try to steal it It's called estate embezzlement. Oh, I'm going to show the peanut butter sandwich. <clears throat> it's called estate embezzlement. And if you believe that this is your land and you believe that uh, Allah is guiding and victory is sure and you believe in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, then you're going to stand up for your estate. No one else is going to do it for you. That's that's the unfortunate part. If we actually had Moorish government, then there will be brave Moorish Americans that you can call upon to, to act uh, in your best interest. And, and you'll see, you'll see at trial, if it gets to that point, inshallah, will be dismissed before then. But if not, hey, it is what it is. But you'll see at trial, there's a certain point in time where, where an armed person who's part of an organization that, that has murdered at least 1,000 civilians, unarmed civilians, or probably armed, but uh, some may have probably armed, but most, for the most part, it's unarmed civilians, that these people are constantly known as being, quote unquote, killers of black people, that when that armed individual approached a moorish american i said i'm here to make sure he is safe that's what we need us backbiting each other oh you're an agent i'm not going to call you by your moorish name uh you're a fetus you're incompetent you're dirty with no proof we're never going to have unity or any type of brotherhood like that for us to show up on the spot and say i'm here to make sure he is safe That's what we need. That's what they have. The Quran said the unbelievers are protectors of one another. So what's wrong with you that you won't protect yourselves? How many times has, has that exact scenario happened where that armed individual showed up to an innocent person in their own vehicle and that person ended up dying? How many times have we seen that? So it took someone to say, I'm here with the similar amount of equipment that you have to make sure that you don't kill him that's what i'm here for don't worry about me you're safe around me i'm just making sure he's safe around you that's how real men talk that's the walk real man walk that's exactly what the black panthers did and you know what's crazy my grandfather was a black panther found that out later i didn't even know Those are the types of conversations we need to have. That's equity. That's being a secure party credit. <laughs> someone, someone who has the same flag as me, who has the same bloodline as me, who has the same interests as me, the same cares as me, common unity, common interests, common values, is making sure that I'm staying alive because this person and the, and the organization he or she represents is known for killing my people? That feels good. That's what real men do. You know how many times you know how many times Asiatic Moorish American women have contacted me saying these these terrorists are kicking me and my children out of my house. What do I do? Winter's coming, what do I do? You know how many times I had to cry because I couldn't do shit about it? Knowing that what's happening to them is wrong, 
knowing that our God tells us to do something about it and I can't? So, so what's the only logical response? We need to prepare for this to make sure that this doesn't happen to any children, any more children on their own homeland. No rap is going to solve that. If we actually had that, we could then 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 actual Moorish American grand sheiks would be empowered to issue warrants and say, so and so, you kicked this Moorish American woman and her children out of her own home on her own homeland during the winter time. That is a crime against humanity. Come to my court. And if they don't show up, okay, we're gonna issue our warrant. And we're going to send our uh, enforcing arm of our nation to make sure you come to our court so we can seek justice. Why don't we talk about that? You can't live by justice and not talk about justice. What do you live by? You're telling me right now you claim to be a Moorish American and you go outside. And you see people that look like you and you know they're homeless and that don't bother you. Meanwhile, you go on Instagram and say, we're Aboriginal indigenous and this is our homeland. And you see your own people homeless and that don't bother you? Okay. Y'all following the wrong people. <clears throat> you need to be following God. You need to, to submit your will to the will of God because God is telling you this is what you do about it. The people that are telling you not to submit to God are not giving you shit. Excuse me. They're not giving you any solutions. None. The only solution is, where's Rashad at? Where's Rashad at? That's their solution. Jamal's an agent because Rashad's not around. They're going to call Jamal by a straw name that his own father doesn't even call him by. Guess who got me this shirt? It's in my DNA. My parents got me this shirt. <laughs> They locked me up. They tried to foreclose against my parents' house. They knew I was in jail. I wasn't going to be able to stand up and, and speak on my parents' behalf. My father showed up, and he said to the judge, you're not going to disrespect my son because he's not here. My wife was there, and she's affirming it. My own father. So why would you listen to a Moorish American who's calling me outside of my Moorish American name? <laughs> you know, women constantly ask me, what do we do? How do we defend ourselves? Where's the Moorish men at? I don't know. I'm striving to encourage our men to stand up and be men. The few men that I do associate, associate with, they are definitely striving their best to take care of their families with the situations that they have. I can't speak for everybody else. My friends, I know Rashad. I, I've had conversation about, uh, about him and family and children. He's doing his best for his children. I talked to Ben. Ben is working his ass off to support his children. And what did Noble Charlie say? Moors are men, upright, independent, and fearless who care for their loved ones. So how are we supposed to love each other? We're not even willing to stand up for each other and say, I'm here to make sure he's safe. And then even after that event, now I'm being charged with 88 years and still saying what happened was wrong. We need to defend ourselves against injustice. The, the word hasn't changed. People say, oh, Jamal, you changed. What changed? Oh, I, I stopped listening to your bullshit crap. I started to realize who you were and you and you and you and you and you. Oh, I realized that the love was fake. Okay, cool. I need to step back from you, 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 and you. That's what changed. You can't buy my friendship. You can't buy my loyalty. <laughs> you can't. Deceive me into, oh, you changed, so what? So what? I'm going to go back on what I know is true. I know the reason why I'm alive is because a lot alone. You weren't there. All these people saying, oh, should have, should have, could have, would He should have said this. He should have did that. You wasn't doing it. You ain't encouraged nobody to defend themselves and train them how to defend themselves and make them proficient in defending themselves against people who are known to kill us, known to assassinate our leaders, known to bomb our communities, known to flood our communities, known to throw our men, women, and children in jail for no god dang on reason. That's what they're known for. What you speaking up about? Oh, Jamal should have said, should have did, could have, should have, would have. What you doing? Where you at? When your people need you the most. Where you at? When you study Islam, you'll see when you die, 
And the judgment day comes, Allah is going to ask you, when you see an injustice, what would you do? What would you do? And you're not going to be able to lie. What did you say? And you're not going to be able to lie. Your hands and your feet are going to speak for you. Your heart's going to speak for you. You can't say nothing. I, I know what I did. I kept Moorish Americans alive. That's what I did. More say, oh, we're under the military colonial occupation. Oh, we are. You're rapping about it? That's it? You ain't many years old? These women are suffering. Women are suffering right now. Suffering. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing women suffer with children who are suffering. That's what I'm seeing. If you're a grown, if you're a grown man, I feel for you, but you're a man. Point blank period. We can stand together if you want. Yeah, let's stand together. We'll be a lot stronger. But I ain't about to hold Hold your hand and try to convince you to be a man. No, if you take, if you hear what I'm saying and it resonates with you, you're gonna stand up. And that's what happens. If you <laughs> if you ain't a man, you're gonna say things like, "Well, we're not military minded." <laughs> you don't need to be military minded to defend yourself against bullies. I was a child doing it. There you go, messing around with the book. <clears throat> All right, change the subject. Uh, any any questions? Jello said, literally had two to three people uh, reaching out for help because they were in a situation that they shouldn't be in when re in regards to homes. There was a brother I was helping. I wasn't helping. There was a brother I was having a conversation with, a conversation with and he was saying how um, in um, 2008, I believe, he lost his properties. And then, you know, we were doing research together, and I said, listen, I think, if this is not legal advice, this is just a simple conversation that we're having amongst brothers. I think you have a claim uh, to win your property back because you had a mortgage through this mortgage company. This mortgage company was purchased by this mortgage company, and then that mortgage company was purchased by Wells Fargo. The parent company to Wells Fargo was Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank admitted that through their bad loaning practices, they helped contribute to the crash in 2008. That crash in 2008 resulted in you losing your home. So it's their fault, not yours. So I believe you have a claim. That's information that can potentially help people. Not Jamal's an agent because Rashad's not around. We reap what we sow. So if we're, if we're sowing disunity and dissent amongst ourselves, then what are we going to get? What are we going to reap? <clears throat> But if, if we're sowing, hey, every Friday we're commanded that it is a holy day. So strive your best not, not to sin, which means strive your best not to disrespect someone else. Strive your best not to commit a sin against your own self, drinking, smoking, etc. cetera. Uh, strive to be kind and patient and greet people with a good greeting and smile at your brother and sister. And, and let's, let's, for, let's come together at a community gathering and, and solve some of our problems. We could actually make change like that, but that requires submission to God because God is commanding you to do that your own desire is that I just want to chill and drink and smoke and do whatever and, and do this and do that that's your desire God wants good for us that's what he says every I only guide you to a path that is straight Shaitan wants evil and destruction for you so don't follow him he's an open enemy to you so what are we doing on Fridays to foster unity amongst ourselves I know where I'm going on Fridays I know what I'm doing with the community. I know how much grants I'm helping p people get for their business. I know the conversations I'm having with the mayor's office for this opera funds for people to get money that need it. I know what I'm doing. To foster unity uh, about my people, amongst my people. I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to other people's Instagram talking crap. What, what does that get me? What does that get them? What does that get us? Well, then, I may 
hear someone say, hey, is there a difference between this and that? Muslim and Muslim, I say, no. Here's the Arabic behind it. Here's the etymology behind it. Here's the history behind it. Here's the, here's the uh, uh, definition from a dictionary where they say Muslim and Muslim is the same, where they say Islam is the Muslim religion, where the tenets are laid out in the Quran with a K. Here's these dictionaries from back then saying that. Here's, here's, here's the answer to your question. I'm not out there looking for people oh what are they saying so i can respond that's not me you'll never see official rise of the moors during their live you won't see that you ain't even you ain't gonna get a screenshot of that i'm not interested not even following got got the account on mute don't even want to see it why because there's a hadith that says and i'm gonna paraphrase because I, I don't i can't remember word for word but it says one of the best Best things for a believer is to not concern himself with doesn't concern him. Do your own thing on your own social media. I ain't there. I'm on mine. I want to focus on what's going to help my daughter, my son, my wife, my life, my mother, my father, my grandparents. Cause why? Because my mother and my father and my grandparents worked hard for their house. I want to make sure that that's in a trust and it's kept in the family. That's what I want to do. I don't care if you think Muslim and Muslim is different. I don't care. I wrote a book for those who want to know the truth. I wrote a book for that. If you're honestly interested in the truth, you will find it. If you if you have perversity in your heart and you love to just feel right and prove someone else wrong, then that's what you want to do. You're gonna your Lord is gonna ask you about that, not me. My Lord is gonna ask me about what I did. Your Lord's going to ask you about what you did. That's what the holy books say. Prophet Noble Drali came and said, we have the Quran as the revealed word of God, Allah. That means there should be no doubt amongst more Americans that this book is a revealed word of God, Allah. So when this book that our prophet confirms for us and affirms for us that it is the revealed word of God, Allah, that means it is an absolute truth. So there will become a day where the Lord of the universe will resurrect every single human being and judge us accordingly. And, and he says that every knee will bow that day to Islam. And then his response will be, this is not a day of worship. This is a day of judgment. Your worship today means nothing, meaning it will be too late for us, too late. And we will receive what we sowed. That is a scary day. It's scary for the disbelievers, but for those who strive to do good, those who gave charity without account, without throwing it in somebody's face, without making it alone, those who prayed, feared a lot in the last day and the day of judgment, those who stood up to tyrants, at least verbally, those who strove to do their best to be a good person, those who strove to be a good spouse, men and women, those who were dutiful to their parents, those who are kind to their to their children, those who greeted their brother and sister with a with a smile, they will be rewarded. All the hardship you, you face in this life, if you strove your best to maintain to be a good person, you will be rewarded for that eternally. Why? Because spirit man doesn't die. You will be one with your Lord, if if your deeds warrant it. But you good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. Remember the soul of man, you guide, you guide its course. You do that. You create your own heaven, hell, and earth. With your choices, you can choose to be a good person. You could also choose to be a bad person. You can choose to dress like a European. That's you on earth. You're choosing to you're choosing for your earth to be represented like that. Or you can choose to dress like your ancestors. That's on you. You can choose to give charity charity in public and private you can choose you can choose to follow up your charity with a bad deed and then it won't be counted for you you can you can choose to do that you can choose to say allah has a son you can you yourself can claim to be allah's son and then also deny allah and you'll be rewarded for that you can guide people to the to the course of allah you can guide people to that and you'll be rewarded for that the choice is yours that's why, that's why the book says heaven, hell, and earth are created by you. 
Who built this house? Allah didn't. Man did. So man created this. You can create your own perspective. You can create your heaven or hell. Through what? Through your deeds. That's how you create it. They're telling you, you can create heaven and earth right here. Allah didn't do that. You, okay, keep playing. Because the very same book says, Allah will judge you. The very same book says, Allah the one, the author, the creator of the earth. Very same book. Be confused by don't hey I'm trying to I'm trying to warn us because just like I'm saying that uh my Lord will ask me when I die, he will ask you. And you cannot say you were not warned because he sent us a prophet. You can't say you can't say that well, I didn't know. He's gonna say, Well, weren't you saying that Allah and man are one? So how could you not know? Nothing. If you are Allah, you know the unseen. So how could you not know? And then you'll be, and then you'll, and then it says, the book says on the judgment, those who disbelieve are going to look at those, their compatriots and say, wait a minute, I was following you. And they're going to say, no, you weren't. Okay, keep thinking these people are your friends here on earth. Keep thinking they're trying to guide you to Allah. Keep thinking that they're trying to guide you anywhere. They ain't guiding you to Allah. If they ain't guiding you to Allah, they ain't guiding you. Prophet Noble Jarali said, place your hand in Allah's hand. He didn't say place your hand in your own hand. Place it in Allah's hand. Which means what? Seek Allah. What is what is Allah telling you to do? That means he has to have written it down somewhere. He told somebody something. Why not go to his book to see what he wants you to do? Oh, okay. Do this, this, and this, and this. Okay. Um, let me do that. Let me do that. Not, oh, what did someone tell me to do? No, no, no. Let me do this. And let me refrain from that. Because my God told me to. I might not fully understand it right now. That's cool. But let me let me follow the guidance anyway. How could you lose like that? How could you lose? What could you lose? Someone said, how do you feel about Shia Muslims? I don't feel nothing. There's one Islam. If you're, if you're following it, you're Muslim. If you're not following it, then would you not? Muslim. So it doesn't matter what you call yourself. It even says in the book, it doesn't matter if you claim to be a Christian or Jew or a Sabian. I don't even know what a Sabian is. But it says if you submit Fit your will to the will of Allah, you'll enter, you'll enter paradise. So it doesn't matter what you call yourself. It matters what you do. Are they I, I, guaranteed? Huh? Yeah. But the book says, the book says there's no secularism within Islam. So that's number one. Number two, it also says it doesn't matter if you claim to be a Christian, Jew, or Sabian. If you submit your will to the will of God, you will enter paradise. And then he says, and then Allah says, I could have made everybody submit to, to my will. But I, but I allowed diversity as a test for you. So, so now, so let's analyze the question. Why would I give a crap about what Shiites think if I know for a fact there are Shiites who have given more charity than I ever could? So, so what am I supposed to say? Oh, well, they, they recognize Ali, so that makes them what? They probably fed more people than me, guaranteed, because every time they make the Hajj, what do they do? They sacrifice a ram for who? For the hungry. I never did that. This Muslim that make that make Hajj every year. I can't afford I can't afford that. But you know what I can't afford? Allah says, if a man provides for him for his family seeking seeking the uh the uh, reward of Allah, that is charity for him. That's what I can do. There's there's many gates to charity uh to, to heaven. There's charity. You can enter through the gate of charity, through the gate of prayer, uh, through the through the uh, the gate of, of uh, jihad, and and several other gates. So so why would I focus on right? Because this is what the Quran this is what the Quran says that uh, you only started fighting each other out of out of uh, jealousy and animosity towards each other after knowledge came to you. So why would I take the knowledge, not implement it myself, and then say what they do is wrong? When I'm not even living by a quarter of it. Let's reflect on us first. Let's do that. Let's make sure we're living right. Before we try to say, hey, what are they doing over there? We don't even own our own homes. <laughs> let's look at, let's analyze this. <clears throat> a large uh, Shia, Shiite population is Iran, right? They're Shiites. That's their homeland. 
They have a say in what happens in their own homeland. Do we? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so why are you worried about them? Their test is for them. Why are we focused on everybody else's test except for our own? It even says in the Quran, how dare you command righteousness on other people when you yourself don't pray, don't give charity, aren't kind to others, aren't dutiful to your parents, aren't fair to your children. You ain't, you ain't this, you ain't that, you ain't this, you ain't that, but you're talking about other people, let's talk about ourselves. Come on. What are we doing? Our prophet told us to bow. They're already bowing. <laughs> Who cares if they put a rock on the floor first? Who cares? They're bowing. That's for Allah. It says in the Quran that on the day of judgment, he will decide between what we have between the disputes we have. That's for Allah to settle. If they're not violating us, no concern of ours. It even says in the Quran, you won't follow what I what I worship. I won't follow what you worship to you your way to me mine. That's what the that's what the actual lessons say. So let's focus on what the lessons say and implement them before we try to get any anyone else to implement those same lessons. That's my take on it. <clears throat> and of course, no disrespect to you. I'm just very passionate about certain things. So please don't take uh, my loudness as disrespect towards you. More passion. More passion. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, if only people knew of the beautiful protection that is bestowed upon us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we submit to him and follow his words to the best of our ability. Listen, man, it even says in the Quran that Allah will guide you whether you're grateful or not. And and I bear witness that that there has been plenty of times in my life where I wasn't even identifying as a Muslim, where I know for a fact God was protecting and guiding me. And he says of himself that he's the most gracious, the most merciful, and guides whom he, whom he wills and provides bounty for whom he wills and takes it away from whom he wills. So there, there, it, it says in the Quran that the only reality is Allah. The only reality is Allah. You know how scary that is? <laughs> you know how scary that is? It's scary. <laughs> the only reality is Allah. That is the only reality, meaning everything that is created for us is just a simulation for us as a test. That's scary. Because if we fail, it's the ultimate punishment. That's scary. They will be questioned in front of the idols and false, yeah, and false zodiac gods. They will. <clears throat> I like that. It's one Islam. It is one Islam. There's only one. It, it, there's only one Allah. Therefore, everyone he sends, everyone he sends, can only say the same thing. And in fact, Allah tells us that if there were multiple gods, there would be fighting and, destruct and destruction. And then when you think about it, when you look at the, the, the Greek pantheon of gods, what are they always doing? Fighting. Because you can't have two supreme ultimate beings just willing anything they want. Because then there would be contradictions. There's no, there is no contradiction in the creations of, or message of Allah. None. And if there is, it's man-made. Which means it ain't from Allah. And then Allah tells us all that is good comes from him, comes from him, and all that is evil comes from ourselves. We have to admit that. That requires submission. Oh, yeah, I messed up. Not God. We'd be like, oh, how come God is allowing so-and-so? No, no, no. Human beings are doing that. How come you ain't stopping it when he told you to stop it? Come on. Come on. Let's be... Hey, this is scary. Take the beam out of your own eye first. Exactly. Which is very difficult to do. It's easy to say you know, you're not up to the standards of God. It's easy for me to say that against anybody. No, no, no. That's why I strive my best to remind myself to be humble. I'm striving to submit. I'm not going to say I absolutely submit 100% of the time at all times. That's not possible. <laughs> it's not. Unless you're favored by Allah to make it so. He spoke light into the universe. No, I didn't. Allah did. I'm just, I'm repeating what the Lord of the world said. These are, this did not originate from me. One of my favorite things about Islam is our heavy mind your own business policy. <laughs> Remember, Abu Dali said, I brought something that you can't tear up. It will tear you up. And that is Islam. You can't tear it up. 
Uh, that's why all the prophets of all religions have always had the same message, even in, if using different words. Exactly, because it's just different languages. The, the creator, the God, is the same one. And in the book, he says, I have never sent anyone to a nation of people except that they spoke their language to make my message clear for them. That's it. That's it. And once you recognize that, then you can say, oh, that's why we honor all true and divine prophets, because they're all coming from the same Lord with the same message. And, and it answers every question that you have about Christianity, it answers. It says in the book that Allah made all the food lawful for, for uh, 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 Israel, except for what he made unlawful to himself. And since they created this, this idea of being monks, being... You know how like the priests and the nuns are all virgins and stuff like that. They made that up out of trying to be super, be super duper pure. And then they started inventing things. It says it in the book. That's why they're like, like that. That's why you see all these priests saying, we're going we're gonna to abstain from sex. Which is, which is a natural human function that God gave us that is normal. You're resisting something that is normal. So now you're doing abnormal stuff. That's why they're doing pedophilia crap. Because they're faking to be perfect. And you can't fake. That's why I try to warn Moors against those Moors claiming to be hominis dominus, holy moly macaroni online. Be careful. Because the Lord of the worlds says every descendant of Adam is a sinner. All of us. So why are they pretending? Then he continues to say that the best of sinners are those who repent. Meaning you feel bad about your actions and you strive to be better. Those are the people that are the best in the eyes of our Lord. Stop looking at these people trying to be perfect. Because they're hard. They're 90. From what I know, those people that try to be perfect, they're hard, hiding something dark. That's why, that's what's so beautiful about the Quran, right? When you look, when you read the Circle 7 Quran, there's a, there's a point in time where Jesus is talking to the people that are acting holy moly. And they say, Esau, they say, Jesus, why are you hanging around these prostitutes and killers and thugs? Why are you hanging around them? And they said, these people don't hide their sin like you. I came here for them. They're real. They they had to go through more hardships than you. They're real about who they are. They're actually seeking guidance. You're pretending. I'm here for them. <clears throat> more seem to have left that out of the curriculum. Which part? I like the fact that you're bringing back the ancient teachings of the Quran of Mecca. I'm not bringing back anything. The prophets came. The messengers came. I'm striving my best to align myself with their message that has already been there. And and Noble Jali came and said, "This is what they are." This, our prophet came and said, "This is what the Muslims of Egypt, India, and Palestine already had, already had it. This is prepared for you, and this is the uniting of the Quran of Mecca." Which means after you read this, you read that. It can't be united with itself, because then it would just be itself. If it's united with something else, that means there's something else. That means there's more. And then in the last chapter, he says, amongst the descendants of Africa, there's much wisdom to be learned, which means after this small, tiny book, there's more to read. And then he says, in the one-on-ones, who are the people that embody the higher self? And he tells us, the answer is those who protect the holy city of Mecca, keeping the unbelievers away. There's only one group of people doing that. And you have to look at Saudi Arabia, the Arabian Peninsula, Go to the city of Mecca, go to the Kaaba, and you see who those people are and what they're doing. And those are the people that embody the higher self. So why are we not doing that? And then you'll hear those who want to sow dissent and disunity amongst our nation saying, why are you trying to make Moors be Arabs? And then the next sentence they will say is, oh, Moors are the original Arabs. They're causing confusion. How are we trying to be like ourselves, but you're saying being like ourselves is wrong, but Noble Jali said to go back to the ancient mindset of our foremothers and forefathers and Moab, who was a descendant of Lot, was Muslim. And there are even Jewish uh, narratives that claim that Prophet Lot, Luke, never ceased in telling the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, which means Moab would have heard it. And if Moab helped build the holy city of Mecca, and the holy city, the Kaaba was built by Ibrahim and Ishmael, and Ishmael ended up marrying a Moabite woman. And Noble Jali is telling us that Moors helped build the city of Mecca. 
Well, then that means Morris prayed five times a day. Scholars, people that have ex read extensively, because you have to read, there's a lot of information out there. Scholars that have read and read and read have said this. People that don't read say something else. People that don't read say these are allegorical people. If Moab is not real, that means by default, you're not a Moor. Because <laughs> we can't be descendants of someone who's fake, someone who doesn't exist. There are zero descendants of Santa Claus. Why? <coughs> because Santa Claus is not real. There's no descendants of the Easter Bunny because the Easter Bunny is not real. So when we, so when our prophet asks us to give us a genealogy of Isa of Jesus, that means Jesus was real. That means everyone in that bloodline was real. Which Ibrahim Abraham is mentioned in that bloodline, which means he is real. Which means his father Terah is real. Which means his brother Haran is real. Which means his uh, his son Lot is real. Which means the descendant of Lot Moab is real. So you can't say Ibrahim Abraham is fake and he's an allegory and he's not a real person, and then say that Moab is real, because Moab is a blood relative of Abraham. And you can't say Moab is not real because then Moabites wouldn't exist and then therefore Moors would not exist. Which means Noble Dry Lee is a liar, which which he is not. So, be careful. How are you and the babies? The babies are good. I appreciate that. They're right here. My daughter's watching Lucas. She was watch, uh, watching a video on math earlier, and we just fed her. My wife just fed my son. He's asleep now. She's right there on the bed. We got a bed in our living room. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. We're all good. Wow. <laughs> all praise due to Allah. We are. We are good. By the grace of Allah alone, we are good. Because stuff be happening that I don't understand. <laughs> and I can't explain. Are, in, in tunnels? Of Jews in tunnels? They're arresting them because they have illegal tunnels under their synagogue that goes where? People don't get. Wow. Any more questions? You want to build it with me? You can hop on a live right now. Let's talk. <clears throat> If you're if you're free, let's talk. What time is it? Time? Okay. I have to pray soon too. How can a brother like me reach out? Uh, Demi. I'm pretty sure I answered some of your questions on uh, Instagram already. Is there a case open yet, or is this is just? They just this just happened. Um, to, I think yesterday. Wow. Yeah, just DM me. We can talk. All right, Morris. It's time to pray. The Quran that Noble Jolly gave us says to bow and submissive obedience to Allah's supreme discretion. It says to reflect on our sense of worship that we have towards Him. It says to worship Allah. It says to give him all, all thanksgiving and praise. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, Noble Drali, who wrote that book, also wrote that we Moors have the Quran of Mecca as the revealed word of God Allah. And so since my prophet has confirmed to me that my Lord has a personal message for me and all of mankind through this Quran, then I'm going to strive my best to live by it and in the book it tells us to pray to pray with those who pray it tells us to bow to make ruku and sujood so i'm going to strive to do that 
Uh, I would draw Lee wrote that um, inspired by the lofty teachings of the Quran, we have it as the revealed word of God Allah. The Mohammedan religion is the least appreciated and probably the most misunderstood of the world's great religions. This is especially true in our Western world. Try to understand what Mohammedanism stands for and some of the things it has contributed to the world, which means we have to read. Mohammed was the founder of the Mohammedan religion. It originated 13 centuries ago on the Arabian Peninsula. So now we know exactly where Noble Jali is talking about. He, he also calls Moors Mohammedans. <clears throat> he says that the Quran should be of interest to all readers. It is the Bible of the Mohammedans. What is the Bible of the Mohammedans? Obviously, it would have to be what Muhammad himself revealed. So it should be of interest to all readers. If you're a moron, you read. When you look up the etymology of the word should, it is an obligation. So it is an obligation for all readers. It is the Bible of the Mohammedans ruling over the customs and actions of over 200 million people. Nobu Ali did not have 200 million people part of the Moorish Science Temple of America, so he cannot be talking about his Circle 7 Quran. It is a work of importance, whether considered from a religious, philosophical, or literary point of view. The Moorish Science Temple of America has received some opposition and criticism. In the main, the opposition has come from certain Christian ministers. They have expressed themselves as being opposed to our propagation of the Mohammedan religion. So just like every other nation of people is propagating the Mohammedan religion who, who profess to be Mohammedans or Muslims, we too are supposed to propagate the Mohammedan religion, which is living by this book, which according to our prophet is... The revealed word of God, Allah. So if our prophet is confirming that this is from God, Allah, this is, this is from Allah, we have no right to doubt it. We have no right to say it's inauthentic. We have no right to say we can't live by it. When the Lord of all of creation, the Lord of everything, is telling us directly what to do and how to do it. So let's go pray.